The Hardtail MTB is the only mountain bike you'll ever need. What? That is a huge call. It is a big call, but I can prove it. I've got the stats. Let's do the show. Welcome to the Dirt Shed Show with Owen. Hi. And Martin. Thank you. I thought you were going to leave me here. No, no never. How are never. you? How are you? Yeah, good. I actually know yeah. you're right because we did an EMTV show earlier on. Did we? Yeah, oh, that was right. me and you. That was uh, me and you. Oh, different top. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. Different top. Um, right, we have got a wicked show today. We have, right? yeah. Because I think this is incredible news. Oh, I I've, think I, it I've is. I've come to a realisation about something. I really believe it. I really believe this. And I think you're all going to love it. Basically, the modern budget MTB hardtail is the best mountain bike Ever made. Ever made? Yes. It sounds nuts, right? Okay. It's the best mountain bike ever made. It's the only mountain bike you're ever going to need. And I can say this with some certainty, right? Because I've got ways to prove it to you that we're in this amazing moment where we can all go and buy basically the best mountain bike ever made at a really affordable price. I'm talking a thousand pounds or less. I know that's a lot of money, but I'm, you could spend 500 pounds. The result's very similar, right? If you get a bike in that bracket, it basically doesn't get much better than that. Yeah, I mean, this is huge. Good news, good yeah, news. I mean, I, I feel like I need a, a lot more yeah. on this topic. Well, um, I've got some points of proof, right? Three of them to be specific, right? Okay, right? So yeah. let's start with some common sense, right? Common sense then, okay. Over there, you've got a lovely Orbea hardtail, right? Yeah. Uh, just over a thousand pounds, probably, something like that. Yeah. But I'm gonna say this bike is representing the category of 500 pound upwards hardtails, all right? Um, yeah, valid. You know, but staying within very reasonable budgets, okay? This is a beautiful bike. Okay? Yeah, it is, it's gorgeous. I really like this, it's got everything. Um, I really love it. But um, this is getting up close to, this is probably about eight grand, but yeah. you're getting up towards 10 grand and beyond when you start having kit like this, all right? 500 pound upwards category, getting up to the 10,000 pounds category, right? So here's the common sense, right? That bike there compared to this, this one is 20 times, in terms of this category, 20 times more expensive than the bikes in that category. 20 yeah. times, right? So my common sense question to you, Owen, is, is it 20 times better? It's not a new question, it's been asked many times, but really, 20 times better? 20 times the experience? 20 times the grip, the braking? 20 times? I think if it's like rolling back to that first mountain bike ride that you do, yeah. and it's like, okay, the climb is a bit hard work, and you go for that first downhill, and the adrenaline rushes in. It's back mm. to your fear thing, isn't it? Yeah. And it's that essence. Mm. Is it 20 times more? Like this bike versus that one? It's tough to it's say tough, that. But this is, this is a lot. That feeling after a really rad bike ride on a good bike, which yeah. is starting from 500 quid, yeah. Absolutely. Um, I think it's hard to say it's 20 times better. I think with this, you spend lots of pounds and it equals one bike. I think the same is true of that. You spend pounds or dollars or euros, you get one amazing mountain bike. Yeah. Sorry for this breaking transmission, but we've got some breaking, exciting news. We've got an awesome competition from our amazing friends at Topeak. We've got a set of T-Hex speed wrenches to give away. We've got a set of T Torque speed wrenches to give away. We've got the really innovative Up Up bike stand, and we've got a dual side pro cage to give away. Terms and conditions do apply, but click in the link in the description box to apply now. Good luck. I yeah. mean, yeah, yeah, but that bike is still better. It is, right. I've crunched the numbers on this, dude. Oh, I've crunched right. the okay. numbers. All right, so let me take you through my little presentation. Perfect, right, okay, okay so, so sell it to me. Here's the graph, okay? It's the value curve of mountain biking that I've created ah. here. So basically we've got time passed on the horizontal axis, and then we've got progress going vertical, right? But what progress? Okay, so like, let's look at uh, bike tech. 
Perfect. And tech development. Love that. Okay. Yeah. So I'm saying 1976, right? The experiment of mountain biking starts. Yes. Okay, right? And the bikes aren't great. Right, but no. the, but the the experience, what they've discovered is like, oh my god, this is the best thing ever, nearly, right? Already, yeah. it's nearly very very good already. Valid, yeah, okay. yeah. And then over the next twenty years, right? Okay, the bike steadily develops and the tech steadily develops, and and if you like, we can we can look at that in in thinking about the people we would have been seeing at the time oh, yeah, and yeah. the bikes they were riding. So repack, you've got those riders. Smashing down the hill on their clunkers. You're like Gary Fisher. Yeah, Gary Fisher, for example. Yeah. Then, like, jump forward to 1990, you've got people like John Tomac. Yeah. Ned Overend. You yeah. Know? And, and, and the, already, by 1990, the, the form, the outline of the mountain bike is already pretty much there. Right? They haven't got shocks on the front yet. They haven't got amazing wow, brakes. Almost, but, but yeah, it's yeah. It's coming. It's yeah. coming in 1990. But through that next decade, 1990 to 2000, uh, and I would say within the first five years, it radically starts improving. Okay? Yeah. The suspension on the front of the bike starts to work. Yes. The brakes improve, the geometry improves. And I would argue, you might have a different year, let me know what you think, but it will be in with the 1990s that basically there was a bike there where you could say, yes, there it is. There's the bike that's got everything about mountain biking it's got fun it's got endurance it's got that amazing adrenaline and it's got like the the rebellion of the clunkers at the start you know it's got everything you need and and i don't know which year you'd say it is i'd say it's probably like 97 i can I think mean, of a yeah. bike gt Zhang. that was pretty rad i, I was gonna go south car with a yeah. with a bomber on the yeah front or you know the, the the cannondales of the day that yeah. i loved of course but i'm boring about cannondales but you know pick your bike pick your brand yeah they'll all have one the yetis of the day you know yeah yeah basically at that point it was it was very very good and it is steadily Improved bike tech and development has steadily improved, but at a much shallower. Progress. Yeah, I guess we had that that really huge ramp, ramp up. Look, we had suspension, and then okay, suspension still improved, improved, yeah. improved, but it's it's not these huge chunks yeah. of yeah. But now let's go back to that graph, okay? Right. Take the tech off, right? Now now let's add something else. We've still got years at the bottom, progress at the side, but now we're looking at the progress of the fear factor. Fear, I, I'm fear not, factor. What Remember what I said. Is this? Fun, right? Yeah. Endurance. Yeah. Adrenaline. Yeah. Rebellion. Oh okay? yeah. Right. That's what mountain bikes give you. Okay? Yeah. We discovered that for sure, very very early on. Right. In fact, if you look at the graph of fear, fear factor. Yeah. Um, 1976. We're almost at a hundred percent fear straight away. The adrenaline is there. The rebellion yeah. is there. The fun is there. The endurance isn't. But the bikes start improving and suddenly they start to work out geometry and designs that help them go downhill fast, but now they can climb. Yeah. Now they're getting better. And by the mid 90s, somewhere there, you are 100% fear factor. Okay. Progress is complete. The experiment has been proved. It so turns out mountain biking is great. So that, that little seed that those yeah. dudes did in and dudettes, uh, in repack where they kind of went up yeah. the the like that has come to full fruition Absolutely. on the and you, on the I guess this is like fear and vibe in terms of yeah. this is the emotion that you get post ride and you can prove with it Pete. you can prove it in yeah. the 90s in the 90s it was mountain biking was the fastest growing sport in the world wow. right everyone wanted to be doing mountain biking everyone wanted to be seen doing mountain yeah. biking. You've got Michael Jordan doing mountain biking and Shaquille O'Neal or yeah, Michael yeah. Jackson on a mountain bike. He probably had a kid's shotgun at the front. Yeah, he probably did. But, you know, you've got amazing, maybe, you've got amazing people wanting to do that sport, right? And, and you put those two things together on the graph, ah. okay? I'm sorry, I keep bringing it back to the numbers, no, it's right? Good. But yeah, I want to yeah, prove yeah. this, right? Tech cannot catch the fear factor, right? In the mid 90s, we nailed 100%. It's like, yes, this is brilliant. And the bike to do it was already good enough. And the tech can't override that. It can only chase it. Um, and, it and it's just a, a fact. It's as simple as this, right? Look at this, right? Bike plus hill yeah. <laughs> equals 
hundred percent fear factor. So now in the different visualization, now yeah. I get it because it is your bike and hills. That's yeah. you like you it, can't it, max it's that out. It's awesome. It's ninety five percent done with the bike plus the hill, and you get almost everything. You can add as many pieces of the pie in that last quarter and give them percentages, but they're never gonna actually impact on what you get from riding a mountain bike. Yeah. And we perfected that in 1990. Now what that means, right, is when you're riding a hardtail mountain bike now that's in the very, very budget area of price point right now, okay, and, and you can go online and type in mountain bike, thousand pounds, you will come up with a hardtail mountain bike that is amazing, right? Yeah. It's this amazing. Imagine this. If I said to you, I could just move you in time a little bit and give you the greatest bike on earth for 500 pounds, I would only have to place you in 1997 and you would have a better bike for off-road mountain biking than anyone on earth. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, that yeah, bike yeah. was so good and it would be up against bikes that had had 20 years of development before, since the, the experiment of mountain biking started. That's how yeah. good a hardtail MTB is, right? Yeah, now. yeah. Phenomenal, right? But that's not it, right? Because okay, because you've almost won me over already. I can nail it. I can nail it. Right, because, nail in the coffin, right? Because Come on, we've then. retested the experiment. And here we are, look, the retest. Ah. Get it? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. So we've got gravel bike, fastest growing segment in cycling again, yeah. year after year after year. Yeah. Now I'm starting to get it. Now yeah. I get yeah. it's flat bar mountain bike. It's a 90s hardtail. It is. And, and basically, if you constrain the uh, customer to the rules, essentially, of a bike that fits within 90s mountain biking, turns out it's amazing. Yeah. Gravel bike riding proves it because it's pretty much the same thing. You can even get a lovely little fox front shock for and these. And rock shocks. They're yeah. called the Rudy. Yeah. Very um, nice. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. Um, and this this is the brilliance of mountain biking. It we've retested the experiment, and the results the same. Suddenly, the same thing that was the boom of mountain biking in the nineties is again the boom of cycling in the twenties. Yeah, See? I get it fully. You can go out and buy yourself the world's best mountain bike for five hundred pounds. That's true. It's a fact. Proven. I love it. Proven. Yeah, I'm there. Did I prove it? Let us know in the comments down below. Um, I'll be interested to see what you guys think of that. Um, but it's time for the news with Tom now. So let's see what he's got. What's up, everyone? We're starting the news this week with a release I got from Zero Bikes, one of the OG brands in the gearbox game. They've announced that they'll soon have the Pinion Smart Shift electric gearboxes as an option on their bikes, quicker shifting via that thumb shifter instead of the traditional grip shift option. Whole load of updates for Fox 2 across a range of products, starting with their 2025 suspension lineup and a new range of grip dampers, the X2, X, and SL for downhill, all mountain, and XC in that order. All three now feature a coil spring, air spring hybrid approach with coil taking care of that initial sensitive stroke with an air damper to provide the ramp up. There is some crossover between dampers and fork models, so please check out the Vox website to see best pricing for the fork that you might be interested in. They're also releasing a rad new gold colorway celebrating the 50th anniversary, but factory orange and black are still in the lineup. They're releasing new race face era and turbine carbon and alloy handlebars too, essentially aiming for compliance at all handlebar widths. New Marzocchi Super Z2, single crown versatility up to 190mm using that new Grip X damper in a 38mm chassis. Lower leg bleeders also, 200mm rotor up front minimum and bomber red. Michelin has released updates to their range of downhill tires. The DH22 and DH Mud are joined by the DH16, a tire for hardback conditions, and the whole range sees upgrades to the tackiness of the Magix compound, as well as 120 TPI dual-ply casing. Michelin also picking up sponsorship of the UCI MTB World Series this week as well. Speaking of new sponsorships, PT's has become the cleaning partner for Bike Park Wales. Steve himself waiting tables, getting stuck in with trail building and heckling e-bikers in their latest promo video for that. Scott Sports have released the Contessa Signature Series with clothing, helmets, a voltage and a ransom, all branded up in their women's specific performance range. Outdoor Research also launching its own brand of mountain bike apparel, putting MTB clothing right alongside its wide range of outdoor gear. Georgia Assel, Damon Iwanaga and Van Steenberg riding that gear in the promo, and Smith has integrated Alec crash detection, a system which alerts emergency contacts as well as other Alec users within 1.8 mile radius into four new helmets, the Forefront 2, Trace, Payroll, and Triad. 
More about those helmets on smithoptics.com forward slash Alec. Forbidden have released the new Dreadlaw, 160 rear, 170 front, full 29 or mixed wheel compatible, four sizes, trifecta suspension, some beautiful two color fades, cable ports that clamp the lines in place on their entries and exits from the frame, some very thorough chain slap protection and new linkage hardware. 5,499 Canadian for the frame kit with a Vivid Ultimate and 12,000 Canadian gets you the ultimate build. Yeti has released the new SP165, floating collet axles around standard size bearings in the swing arm, better frame protection, and the next generation of Switch Infinity Links alongside the usual geometry tweaks. $4,800 frame only, top end build racking up a $9,200 bill. Some sad news to close out now after a tragic riding accident in Vancouver, which has led to the death of Andrew Chu, a free rider and North Shore legend, sponsored by Ride NF Clothing Company. Always a friendly face and a huge supporter of North Shore mountain biking and the next gen of Groms. Our thoughts are with the community, his friends and family at this time. Right, this week's sickest thing has to be this new video part from Walter Meyerhofer and the rise called Something's Last a Lifetime. Walter's been in a few other videos lately and posted social, so it's sick to see him patiently stack seven minutes of his best footage over the course of three years. My favorite clips have to be the pedal ice pick, the hand plant on the street was rad, and then obviously riding that massive ledge which Aaron Chase rode in his newer Disorder 5 part 20 years ago. Aaron Chase did back feeble regular 180 out, and then Walter's done front feeble opposite 180 out. So I think it's pretty cool to see him put respect on that. I've been there in person and the drop on the other side is massive. And then the end is ridiculous. He does this super long back feeble 180 out. If you like mountain bike street riding, definitely go check this one out. Right, that's my sickest thing this week. Time to go back to the shed. Okay, thank you guys. Um, right, I've got a poll result for you because oh. I did a poll on hardtails. Uh, Not that I'm obsessed this week no, or yeah. anything. Um, we did the poll uh, on our community tab over on YouTube and it's what's your experience with hardtails? Pick one from the options below. Um, we got 30% on I Only Ride a Hardtail, best thing ever. Wow. That's pretty great, isn't it? That's awesome. Yeah. That's kind of what I'm hoping. I'm hoping I mean, yeah. but that's loads more than I thought. Yeah, anyone in there that surprises you? Uh, I think the multiple one is a hardtail. So I think it's yeah. this thing of everyone, like we've got loads of, what, what's that? I'm bad at maths, 55% basically mm. yeah. are like hardtails. Yeah. I, and what I really think is amazing is that. Obviously, today I'm stressing that if you're going to go and buy a hardtail, it suggests someone new to mountain biking or someone who's, you know, going to upgrade oh, to a yeah. regular bike. But I also think like this: if you've got an amazing full sus bike in your garage, right, you can go out and spend five hundred pound too and get that experience of the early nineties yeah. MTB as well. And I'm telling you, right, you're going to love it. You're yeah, going to no, love yeah. it. You're going to love it. Um, and everything suggests that you would. All of these new modern ways to also do mountain biking, but call it... Down country. Yeah, whatever. Um, right, let's take a look at... We haven't got any hacks and bodges again this week, but we have got hounds and beagles. Hounds and beagles. Hounds, hounds and, and beagles. beagles. It looks confused. I am. A bit scared. <laughs> <laughs> let's do it. Hounds and, and beagles. beagles. And, and eagles, eagles. Oh. and seagulls. Hounds and beagles and seagulls and eagles. I love it. Ooh, eagles, it's hard to add beagles. one to that. Lou, got anything? Seagulls. Got nothing. No, damn it, damn it. Anyway, it was good while it lasted. Sorry. Let's look at the hounds and beagles we have got. Uh, Jake has sent this one in. Um, this oh, is uh, wow. Salt. Uh, where, what's the name of the dog? It's a lovely looking dog. Uh, is, a, is that an Australian sheepdog, I would say? Uh, it's very nice. Yeah, very nice. Uh, it's Cali. Dog's yeah. called Cali. Dog's very, called Cali. Just lovely dog. Uh, well, I don't, we can't do nice and super nice on dogs. They're just um, hack or bodge. Nice. Um, Robin's uh, riding his Vetus, um, but he's trying to wear out Duke. He looks like he's doing it well. Duke's tongue's yeah, flopping Duke all over the place. Look completely gone. Yeah. Good dog. Duke. Good dog. Yeah, lovely looking thing. Oh, this is ace. This is Evie. And Evie. Hardtail centric as well. Look at Evie on her first little bit of... Oh, wow. <laughs> That's so cute. Gee. Come on, Evie, catch up. Perfect little trail dog right there. I mean, Hacks and Bodges is good, but I didn't realise we'd got this second setting of Hands and Beagles. <laughs> this is loads better. Uh, and this is from Ewan. There's no name for the dog. It looks a lot like it could be Evie, but it's not. It's a very similar looking dog. Um, it is... Uh, UN's Bird Ether 9C. That's pretty good. A lot of dogs, not one seagull. No. 
Jesus Christ. But as a feature, I thought we'd only got hacks and bodges. I didn't realise there was a secret setting of hands so, and beagles. So, so more of that, more. please. So much more. So much more. Um, right, let's take a look at the shop. Um, one of the things I really liked this week, uh, I was looking in there, we've got the MTB Kit Essentials. Yeah. Um, I particularly like the new Riser Long Sleeve jersey that I got sent last week. I'm oh, quite pleased oh, with. Oh, nice. Oh, um, cool. And have you tried the racing trousers? Have you got those? I've got a pair. Yeah. yeah, I thought I saw you wearing a pair the other day. Yeah, maybe yeah. Was, yeah. I, I think so. what's super cool is I was like, oh, these trousers will be sort of like, yeah. Mm. I don't know. I just thought they'd be a lot heavier, but they're super lightweight. Crazy and light. And super ventilated. They're crazy light, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, we've also got the 20% off bundle still going. And ah. look at this guy promoting the maintenance book. Looks familiar. Look at that guy there. Cool. Um, yeah, so some great stuff in the shop. Make sure you head over to the shop and uh, support us. It's very important. Yeah, it all um, helps. And it brings you in, part of yeah. the crew, part of the crew. Right, some great stuff we spotted on Instagram. Um, look at this, 1997. This is what this is what it looked like back in the day when it was yeah. pretty much done and dusted. Obviously, this isn't a hardtail, but I do love... I, I actually feel like that, the LTS um, and the bikes around that time, I remember visibly seeing the difference on the downers and how they were moving over yeah. the train on that bike. Yeah. And it and it yeah, I feel like that's where we first saw it. You know, boom. Yeah. There it goes. Mountain bike complete. Mountain bike completed. Yeah. Um, no, very like cool. Um, have you seen this fire wall ride from I'm, Thomas Cotto? <laughs> the health and safety <laughs> specialist in me. That's wicked, isn't it, that? I'm just a bit yeah. scared to check be honest. Out, check out his Instagram page. He's I got can't. Some great stuff on is there. there? Where's the Where's the nearest fire extinguisher? He's These put, are the things that I'm concerned about. He's putting a good video together there. I All like right, it but a lot. has he not burnt his tires? I don't know. I don't know. He's, I bet he practiced like, it before it was on fire a lot. Um, I hope so, because if he kind of so. like back check that and that, yeah. Anyway, it's cool. Yeah. Um, and saw this Hans Ray doing a bit of it's e-biking. But he's, he's turning that e-bike into a lovely little uh, hybrid of moto trials and mountain bike trials. Uh, I think he's showing us what we can do with e-bikes, and I just love that he's still showing yeah. us. Yeah! That guy. Still doing. Still showing us. Yeah. Absolutely love it. Um, got some great stuff coming up on our channel this week, actually. Um, so uh, make sure you check out some of these. Uh, can an e-bike make me fit? Can it? Oh. Can it, Owen? Can it? Yeah, of course it can. You're riding your bike more, so it does. Yeah. Um, is this MTB most exciting discipline, or is this? Uh, yes. Is? I'm not sure what it is, but I'm not sure what it is. We've got a Blake Builds Garage special. Ten Ooh. ways you're wasting your money. I need to know that. I need to know that. It's going um, somewhere. Yeah. Um, and how to climb the impossible climb. Cool. Oh, okay, the bike vault. Yeah. Let's head into the bike vault. See what we've got. Into the bike vault, and um, we have got some familiar bikes here. Let me just get the bell so we can give these some super nices because I fear, as these are bikes uh, we probably quite like, oh, as yeah. you probably built them, maybe. Um, these maybe are probably piece. super nices. Uh, lovely canyon here. Do you remember building that one? Yeah, I think yeah. I do. I think it's spectral. Yeah, yeah lovely. It's maybe um, one, two, super, five. Yeah. super nice. Super nice. Um, tell us what you think. Uh, propane Ooh. here. Uh, oh, I think that's the Eugene, or maybe yeah. it's the carbon tie. Yeah, I think it's the tie of Rich's actually. Oh, that's really it looks nice. like Rich's build actually. Yeah, yeah, super nice. This is going to be a lot of super nice. I can't imagine I'm not going to like any of these. And uh, that yeah. is a Rallon, so it's the enduro bike from over there, and yeah. that one is Rich's again. So super nice. How are yeah, we going to downgrade nice. any of these bikes? Super yeah. nice. I, I think I'd actually get fired if I didn't give them a super nice. Um, next up, we've got, I think this is Neil's Canyon. This isn't is it? the new Spectral. Yeah. So this ah. one's got the Kiss, like. Um, ah, steering. Steering center. We can't yeah. call it steering damper. No. Um, it just looks, if you can think about that other Spectral 125 that had before, mm. this one, it just looks like it's been down the gym. Yeah. Super nice. Is it Neil's that one? Uh, looks like a I Neil think it set. Is. Yeah, it is Neil's. It's set. the stealth that makes me yeah. think that. Um, next one. This is Neil's too, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is his propane tie. -E. This tie -E. is really nice. Yeah, I'm in. I tell you what, I've got one of the spin drifts. The big long travel. Yeah. Yes. Spin drifts. They're super. Yeah, they are super, super nice. nice. I'm giving yeah. a bike. I can't even see a super nice. Uh, next up, another Canyon XC build. Yeah, I think uh, that's a Neuron. I think that was Neil's Neuron. It's the mm. Neuron CF, I think. Lovely. Yeah, very nice. Super nice. Yep. Um, and. 
lastly, ooh, look at that. Second triple word score of Neil's bikes here. This is the Alloy Spectral, which yeah. Neil, I think he still has. Oh, yeah. I'll have to check on where that is. Uh, but yeah, with Olin's. I think yeah. it's the Fabio Vidmar Signature Edition. It's very, very nice. Um, yeah. And then last, Ike and Orbea. Oys, um, or Oys. Again, I feel like that is Rich's bike, or is that Anna's? Wow. You Close. guys will know This is Blake's. Is it? Yeah. Blake does XC. Is Anna sort of, a, is Blake sort of a mix of Anna and Rich? Kind of. Sort of join them two Ooh. together and you get a Blake. Definitely I mean, in height. Dunk. Yeah, something like that. Um, yeah, that is a super nice as well. Um, and I think what these bikes are proving is that there is some incredible innovations of mountain biking over the years. But are they any better yet? No! I've already proved the point. Yeah, you have. <laughs> I mean, with hardtails, definitely. Suspension? Definitely. No, no. Oh. No, that's not the point. Oh. No, Owen, you've missed oh. the whole entire point of the show. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Let's go back to the start. Okay. So tell me again about the chart. What's Actually, the we chart? probably haven't got time for that. Um, you guys, we'll see you next week. Let me explain it to you again. Okay, I'll right. see the chart again. There's two wheels. Yeah. Two. Okay. 